Um, let's see. I'm an, I, I'm an animator. I started off as a illustrator. Um, uh, then I started making animated independent animated films, and um, uh, which got me work uh, in um, television. And, uh, and now I'm back to making uh, independent films and I just started teaching uh, at Hostos Community College. Andy London brought me in and uh, he can tell you about Hostos, okay? That's it. <laughs> My name is Yvonne Green Kovic and um, I uh, I generally work as an animator, I'm an animator in city at um, little uh, uh, T studios around, um, and also with clients directly. Um, but this last year and a half, um, I've really been focusing on, um, on Animation Nights New York, which is a festival at Healthcare in New York City, um, with monthly screening events, and also an annual festival September 29th and 30th. John, Mr. John and Drew is a part of it <laughs> as an advisor for. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's kind of been my main focus really this last year and a half. But it's been very exciting. I've, I've watched a lot of animation. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody's in the city on the 10th, there's the May Animation Nights in New York event, which starts at 8 o'clock at 180 May. Andy? I am Andy London, and I am an independent filmmaker animator, and a teacher, professor, and I run a program in the South Bronx I started at Hostos Community College for Animation, and I also teach at Harvard, as an adjunct. Want to tell us about Women's Square? Sure, okay, oh, I forgot that. Yeah, I, <laughs> my wife and I have been making films together since like the late 90s. Uh, uh, mostly independent shorts, uh, but we've also dabbled with commercial work. Uh, uh, we did a very, we did a maxi pad campaign about 10 years ago, Have a Happy Period Always, where we animated uh, flying maxi pads and umbrella maxi pads. And, uh, <laughs> it was really awful, but it paid a lot of our college loans off. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I've done some really awful tile designs for films that never made it out but with big budgets. And, uh, but, and also, but, I've, you know, I've worked commercially for a long time, but about three or four years ago, I decided to pull back from that and just uh, focus on my teaching. I've been teaching since 1992, 93. I started as an ESL teacher in Czech Republic in Prague, and I came back to New York doing that, and somewhere around 2000, I stumbled upon animation, and then I became an animation professor in the early 2000s. Hey, I'm Tucker. I'm an animator, mostly freelancing around city um, advertising projects. Some on short film TV type projects too. Uh, yeah. I went to Savannah College of Art and Design, finished up three years ago. Big brother? My big brother? My big brother, yeah. That's why I'm listed that's as actually, a character. That's why Tucker is listed as a character. I mean, yeah. They were my favorite character designs of anything that year, and if I had a separate award, he would have gotten it. Um, but yes, he just, he's just he got a wonderful imagination. I followed him on Tumblr, and I just had a great time just hitting that like button. Uh, he's probably got more likes from me than a except for Annie, which I always get shared to my six followers. Uh, <laughs> no. Tumblr's you, very you hard. Have a, you have eight followers. Eight? Mm -hmm. yeah, now I'm tonight because you're going to you find me, right? Solid eight. <laughs> I'll follow you. No, it's okay. Don't worry. I never, I never like share anything. So it's like I share Annie, I share Tucker's design. So if you're on Tumblr, tell me. I'll just share it. Um, but anyway, what I want to do, and how much does everybody know about animation, first off? Do you know all the different types of animation? Okay, so there is traditional hand-drawn animation, which is pencil and paper. Uh, there is 2D computer animation, which is uh, a lot of the stuff you're watching on Cartoon Network TV shows. And then there's 3D animation, Pixar, you know, we've got a lot of Disney now. And then there's stop-motion animation, which is like Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. And clay animation would be Wallace and Gromit. Okay, and uh, if you're old, David and Goliath. Yeah, David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Gumby? 
Gumby, Gumby and, and, like and, the, and the California yeah. Raisins. And there's cut out of animation yeah. too, which is like South Park when it first started. And now it's you know, uh, computer to be computer. I think I covered everything. Right? Yes. Okay. yes. So, yeah. so there, is, there are genres within <laughs> the animation <laughs> genre, um, which a lot of times, you know, and there's different ways of shooting it and filming it. And I always rave about your, your tripod set up because I still love it. Um, I, I told you I, for my iPhone, I bought like an iPhone oh, cool. tripod yeah. and I can do it at home. I haven't done anything, but I've got all the equipment now and I've got all the apps on my phone, you know, like Animator 2 and Stop Motion 3 or whatever the hell they are. Um, don't do anything with them, but you know, I've got filming too. So, hey Mark, how are you? <laughs> Mark Sternberg is the VR curator for for the New York City Indie Film Festival, and he's responsible for a presentation on Friday and the VR experience on Saturday. So, and he also is part of any. Well, I kind of like adopted everybody and others. Sorry. <laughs> 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 um, so, okay. Now, for myself, um, if you were coming to me as a client to make your film, then um, more than likely, unless you had enough money to hire me, I would tell you <laughs> to go away. <laughs> um, animation's very expensive and very time consuming. People never really understand that, how time consuming it is. And, and clients are, I find, are, are they, they, they're not grateful. I mean, this year I gave up uh, half my Christmas vacation and a free trip to Mexico for a client who I'll never see again. And actually, I will never do that again. Uh, they uh, gave me enough time, but I knew it wasn't enough time to do three minutes of animation. And in the end, kept just asking for changes, and I was like, Look at your calendar. We're like two weeks <laughs> past when you can make changes. And they were still making, wouldn't it be great if he smiled and jumped up in the air on the scene instead of lying in the coffin? I mean, it, it was just, just crazy changes. So if you had a script and you came to me, unless you had at least, I don't know, 12,000 a minute, Really? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't, Absolutely. I wouldn't. I mean, that's the family rate? Was, what? That's the family rate? Fa yeah. <laughs> Friends and family, okay, 11.5. Okay, you got it. I, yeah. You're hired. Yeah, but um, that's the thing you have to be very careful about. And I just want to mm -hmm. tell a small anecdote about an animator who is no longer with us. But um, Michael Sporn probably did logged more an hours of animation. And you can look at his blog, it's still up. It's called a splog, I think. And look up Michael, S-P-O-R-N. He animated everything and he did such beautiful animation. And when I first met him, when I made my first film, Mrs. Matisse, and I told him that I had $30,000 on my credit cards, he, and we were on a small plane going up to <laughs> Ottawa. It was my first, like a prop jet, um, on my first film festival with, my, with a film. And he turned around and looked at me and told me that he was $250,000 in debt. <laughs> and he was like, he said, if you think you're going into this to make money, you're crazy. I mean, and he just was just like, he made art because he loved it. He loved making art. And um, so I would tell you to take your script and I make my own film. Okay. <laughs> well, but that's why I got all those apps so that I can make my own. I, I start everything off drawn. I, I basically, I love working pencil on paper. It is, I, it, it's when I have a pencil in my hand, it like has a direct line to my brain. Um, and uh, I just, uh, you know, I, I work on the computer and I draw into the computer 
But there's something about ideas that for me, it, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I've tried using, putting like a rougher stylus in my, and putting paper on top of my, um, my Wacom tablet. Um, and I've tried a Cintiq, which other people I know love. But um, I just always come back to pencil on paper. It just, I, it's just uh, what I love. I usually, I try to leave people with advice at the very least, so <laughs> I do. We <laughs> can have coffee. I do. Like, I try and explain to them that they have to maybe break it into chunks or give them a sort of estimate about how, like, awful, you're like, how long it will be, you know what I mean? And then tell them, just in brief, like, you know, We'll ask them questions, and really that's the way to get to the heart of the situation. <laughs> because, you know, it's just like, do you have you thought about characters? Do you have character designs? Do you have thumbnails? What are thumbnails? Well, okay, you need thumbnails. You know what I mean? Like, how do you think this would be broken down, like, into digestible pieces? Because generally, people don't even know where to start. They just have this idea, and in their mind, with this vague notion, they're like, the script's brilliant, oh, it's got potential, I can visualize it as an animation, and that's as far as they go. And then sometimes, sometimes, okay, more often than not, it just they go, okay, fine. <laughs> my, I wear them down, no. <laughs> my, my favorite was when a celebrity chef came to me and said, I want you to make a show about my life. Oh, that's great. That's in three stupid. minutes? What? In three minutes? No. She wanted me to design an entire show mm -hmm. about with her. And like to make it look like Pixar? Yeah. yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, first, my first issue is that you know, you know, when I was in college, I just got out of college and I was really new to the business. This was 1990 and it was, it was a recession. And I had this client, this guy who wanted brushy paste his brushy paste family, and he was like a retired banker in Wall Street. And he wanted a brushy paste? He's this, this family that sold toothpaste and all these products, and, oh. and he basically signed his name to everything, and he had this really, really disgusting sister who used to crap in my toilet in the studio and not flush it, ah! and I mean, it was just like, it was just so awful, and they had me like, just totally, I just quit smoking, and it was so hard to stay like that, and I just remember having a meltdown, and then I kind of figured it out, because I was making these puppets for him, I was casting them, so I would lie and I would cover them with, with, a, with a blanket and say, you know, you have to see it next week, and next week, and I'm not charging me more money with this puppet, I did nothing with it, but I mean, but he really, it was, and I remember I quit that, I would just ramp for the hills, I literally ramp to Eastern Europe. And I came back three or four years later and I saw him on the subway, I packed. It's ran the other way. Oh. Yeah. So it this was like is a PTSD. kind of how-to class. Yeah, it was just awful. Well, the Jayster yeah. animation. <laughs> 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 it got better though. I mean, yeah. I some clients I love. I had some wonderful clients. And I really but uh, one thing I love doing is like, I, don't, I, I hardly ever, ever, do I like to ask for as much money as possible if I step if I the project is really dumb and see how far they'll go? <laughs> but once in a while they say, okay, you're like, oh boy. You know, you're really well, yeah. The other but, thing though is like yeah. contracts. I yeah. mean, I yeah. I was saved by a contract um, like mm -hmm. more recently than I'd like to admit. Like, because I <laughs> and every time I have a bad experience, I'm like, never again, you know. And then like a couple of years go by or something, and you're like, well, oh, this is so good. Like, so I just forget. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> Expecting a different result. Oh mm. God! But like the contract totally um, mm. saved me because I had something to point to yeah. and say like, no, this was the deal. And then mm. I mean, I still had it was still such a struggle because you have to like, especially if you're working, um, if you're doing everything, mm -hmm. um, you have to like do the creative stuff, and sure. then you have to like channel Dr. Spock or something, <laughs> and like go into battle as like a Vulcan, Take you know? Drugs. Yeah, I mean, honestly, in order to, to be able to walk away potentially from a project, yeah. and, you know, if they're playing games, you know what I mean? You have to sort of like draw a line. Um, it worked out, thank goodness. But if I hadn't had that contract, I mean, I don't even know. Everybody gets contracts for their work, right? Because even if, if you're hiring somebody or mm -hmm. you're the employer, 
always give yourself an out in your, your contract, okay? Because it's not working. And I have recently had a situation. I walked away from a project I was on for a year. But I had a contract, so, you know. Yes. So you arrange a, a kill fee. Yeah. Well. <laughs> That's your golden <laughs> I didn't get paid to begin with, so. Well, I, usually what I do is um, I give them like way too much detail, but I just feel like it's good for clarity because that's what they're supposed to be. Contracts are supposed to be for clarity, right? Not because you're trying to like <laughs> pull something over on someone. Or oh, pull the a blanket <laughs> over the uh, puppets. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's very clever. All right. Well, I've never been directly asked to do that, but I worked on a project this winter where it was more or less the same situation. I and another engineer friend of mine, he was approached by a production company to work on this series that needed animation. And then I joined in to do all the character design, a bunch of animation stuff. So we were given a script and like very general directions. Uh, and we spent like two or three months just start to finish with the minute long sequence for this thing based on Just some character designs. No, 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 I, from start okay. to finish, like the whole spot. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we were given a script and then we would check in. I mean, the same way, like in a contract we set up you know, when we would deliver certain things and how long they had to review those things and then we had to make changes on those things and back and forth like that. Uh, yeah, so it was, I mean, we were pretty much on our own for the most part. We were checking out maybe every two weeks with like, that's what we got, we think. But they were very open to like, let us do our own really? thing. Yeah, I mean, that was kind that's of the long. Yeah, yeah the nice. show, it's coming out this summer. It's like a Netflix series thing. And every episode's gonna have a little bit, and they're very open. Like that's they picked out each artist to direct their sequence based on. We like that kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's like, we'll just stop talking. Really? Is the other guy? But yeah, so. That's the thing. So you're gonna alert us when it's on Netflix so that we can share it with the New York City Indie Film Yeah, they just. Community. It was just announced the release date sometime in August. I think it's called. Uh, Something. something. Okay. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of those. I'm gonna be looking at that. <laughs> title, something. Something. Okay, I like that. They're good. It's more of a yeah. headache. Okay. If having a manager or an agent in Hollywood mm -hmm. can really, yeah. I mean, I had a, a a manager who ended up getting me on a show that, uh, Lizzie McGuire, that basically, he showed my reel to someone at Disney, and then I, and the producer liked my work, and I got hired. That was a manager or an agent? I, it was a manager. Wow. He was, um, but that was the, I mean, he, he ended up being a real asshole. Okay. Um, but he got me this great job, which I was very grateful for. Um, so, you know, um, but that was, from then on, he, uh, what they do is they take, I think, what did he take? He took 5% uh, or 10% of 10% of my, what I made. And then he was, and this is why I call him an asshole. He was supposed to bill me for the lawyers 5% who negotiated my deal. And he never billed me for the lawyers' money. And, um, six years, seven years oh, in, Jesus. the lawyer realized that he had never gotten any money from me. And only because he was the nicest lawyer on the planet, he said, it's okay, it's too much money for me to ask you for now. Wow. The lawyer never got paid. Wow, wow. How many lawyers do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. His name is Tom Feynman. He's in L.A. Oh, a lawyer. Actually, yeah, he's a yeah, lawyer. He's, a manager. Okay. <laughs> he's like the only, <laughs> only honest lawyer in Hollywood. <laughs> now I know a couple of other ones. Awesome. Yeah. My wife was obsessed by managers and agents for a long time. And we just, yeah, we, we had one pretty cool one in L.A. Yeah. And then he got big and then he, he dumped us. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other manager was so sad. He was, he was a nice man, but so stupid. Yeah. He would call my wife for, for contacts. And I'd say, you're the manager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but that's, that's just the name. The, so, the thing, you know. uh, there are these mm. places like Gotham Group mm. in LA, and they have the 
sta large stable of animators. But the bad thing about that is uh, they take money from all your jobs, no matter how you got them. And there's like a stable. They're not in there to help promote your career. Yeah. They're like, you know, they put out like the deck of cards, you know. Here are the 68 animators we represent. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and it, it, it <laughs> might not be the best way to go for most people. Oh, yeah. But I think that's just agents in general. When, yeah. I was, when I was writing, I mostly got my own gigs and the agents were right. speak. So, right. you know, because I had no contact. Yeah. There are a couple of people I know actually that take a fee from a uh, client and not from the animator. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's nice. I think, the, that, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, cool. that's you know? great. The distribution yeah. panel tomorrow, that's how one of our aggregators yeah. will be up there works. Yeah, but she takes a fee yeah. from the client, not from the, not from her What's client. What's her name? You met her. I just wonder if it's the same person I was just talking about an hour ago. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> um, we'll talk later. But, uh, you yeah. don't want to tell us the name? Oh, it's Amy Shapiro. She was on the, oh, uh, the panel. Oh, so, yeah. No, she'll be on tomorrow. Yeah, that's awesome. I've got a good panel tomorrow for distribution. So that's great. So. About the, to give me, just to answer Mark's question about the um, contract, though, because I'm, I'm curious to know how you guys do this. Mm -hmm. um, I I usually create, uh, it's probably way too much information, but like it's like an Excel sheet right. broken down into little bits, so mm -hmm. it's all very clear, and then I create an estimate of like the amount of hours the assets will take and the amount of animation will take. I just like put it all in there and then apply a rate. <laughs> and then they have, you know what I mean? And then put sort of a, uh, you know, statement, specific statement about like number of days, number of reviews they're allowed, mm -hmm. and um, unapplied dates for all that. So it's just like clear. And then, you know, if I, I might knock it down a little bit just to show like the sucker. <laughs> no, but I mean, honestly, though, if it does, though, it, like, lets them know how, um, like, what's what's involved. And unfortunately, um, like, I, I don't know that I would do that for other types of jobs, but with animation, I almost feel like a responsibility to explain. You yourself. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Every job we've ever done, we hire a producer and take a cut. See, we have the producer I've it. never had and a producer. We, yeah, and I, I find that... <laughs> I like producers a yeah. lot because they can be the bad guy. Yeah. And, but they're also there. But you just have to find a producer that really understands what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You know, and that's, yeah. That's awesome. No, exactly. But that's yeah. what I mean about having to like go into battle and stuff if you're doing both jobs. It's, Thank God it for producers. Is mm -hmm. well, yeah. that was the goal yeah. I had yeah. before Animation Night New York started. Like I came back from this um, mm -hmm. festival in Edinburgh and I was just like. All like amped and validated, and like I'm gonna find a producer. Like I'm gonna go to. So I started to going out to all these events that I was like mm -hmm. organizations I was a part of and never attended any events at. Right. Like I actually started putting myself out there, and um, then suddenly yeah. other doors open though, and yeah. I haven't been doing anything. But you know, I know a lot of producers. That's and awesome. Some, yeah, my, my wife, first. she did. She <laughs> she got sick of the whole freelance thing, and she just started her own agency. So now she, oh. I mean, it took, it's a work in progress, but now she has like one big client and she's starting to get other clients and now she just hires the directors and the animators and whatever she needs for the jobs so and good. she, and she makes a lot more money that way because so she's a own marketing boss. company or an it's an, company? it's an advertising agency. My wife has okay. always made a, a living doing advertising and I've always made a living teaching okay. and we funded our projects with grant money or mm -hmm. with from schools or uh, right. commercials, usually commercials that pay really well, and you just take some of that money and you, you pay for the next film you're going to do. Uh, but over the years, she got sick and tired of having annoying bosses, and uh, she just decided about two years ago to just open her own agency. Good. So that's it. It's really doing well. Okay. She has a partner. She has an art director partner, but not a partner. But she owns the business outright, and she pays him the salary. What's it called? It's called London in New York, and her work is the Met Opera. You see the ads for the Met Opera. The voice must be heard. That's all her campaign. Yeah. I'm teaching and I'm expanding my library of, of books. Uh, I generally the the books are not like 
how to make an animated toy. It's like storyboarding. There's great books on storyboarding. I just called one from a Nancy Beeman. Uh, then there's uh, books on um, animation, just different types of animation. So, and then it, uh, or, and closest I've gotten to that, to a production, is um, a book I got a million years ago that showed the, um, how to make a film like on paper or 3D or, but I mean, I don't think you did. There is, I, though, there is. There's well, like, well, a, I mean, I haven't read them myself, but uh, Steve Sabotman has a book on, uh, I can I, I yeah. never write it, but he's a, a filmmaker, animator, who works at RISD. Uh, he has a book on how to make independent short animated films, step by step. I think it's like 10 years old now, maybe a little bit older. And then there's also, I haven't read this one either, David Levy's book. Do we have a book on yeah. that too? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, but yeah. uh, I, for the Steve Sabotnik book, I know that I know a bunch of teachers that use that book to teach yeah. their classes. And that I don't, yeah. uh, but I recommend to you if you want to do that, uh, jump in and do something and, uh, yeah. and join the ASIFA uh, community or Animation yeah. Nights and yeah. just what, you know, no, do it. Not doing that. <laughs> Come on, Mark. <laughs> Rather than you know, I think if you're, if you want, anyone wants to make animated films, there's this group, ASIFA. Yeah. Um, and then you can also go to the, the, um, uh, any, uh, any screenings. Uh, I mean, it's like, I think immersing yourself to yeah, a certain yeah. extent. The other thing is just like, like my school, we offer film, animated short filmmaking classes. You can audit those classes and just see the process of it. Or take one in continuing ed uh, at SBA or any of these schools and where it just says pattern of making it short over a period of the semester. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the, the best class I ever, mm -hmm. night school class I ever took mm -hmm. was um, at SBA. It was a night school class. And the guy didn't essentially teach us anything. <laughs> okay, it's technical, right? However, the thing that he got us really excited about was our own lives and mm -hmm. stuff that you could make a film about. Mm -hmm. That if you write down your ideas sooner or later, you, it, the idea pulls the, pulls the mm -hmm. film along. It's like, oh, this is such a great idea. And you have to make it. And the cart just keeps rolling yeah, yeah, down yeah, the street. Yeah. If you don't have that idea that you're just like, I'm going to make an animated short, better yeah. to like, but that, this is my no, way. No, no, no. I mean, I remember when I started, I mean, I, didn't, I had no knowledge whatsoever. I actually took the wrong class. A friend of mine was making a <laughs> website in Flash in the 90s, like late 90s, of my artwork. And he was doing a really shitty job, and I wanted to do it. He wouldn't show me. So I was like, I hate this guy. So I just fuck you, and I, and I signed up for SBA for website design. And I show up to class that first week on a Saturday, and I'm 30 years old, and it's a stop motion puppet making class. And I'm like, all these like 18 year olds who failed their class at SBA, and I'm like, okay. And I'm this guy who's like this rock star guy with this crazy hair, Greg me about himself, fuck every two seconds. He's a nice man, but. He was just, you know, but I, but he was really charismatic, and I really, really just enjoyed it, and I just loved making the puppets. And then, what really excited me though was when I got to animate. We had this thing called the Animation Lunchbox, and it was like this VCR that allows you to shoot things frame by frame. It was like two thousand dollars to shoot yeah. like two hundred fifty frames, and I just all I did was make my puppets' eyes go back and forth. He's like, that's really boring. I'm like, it's so cool. And, uh, <laughs> and I was working as an ESL teacher, English as a second language teacher, and I just started teaching over time, bringing private students to my apartment, teaching my pajamas, whatever, taking all these assholes into my apartment and putting on my floor, just to get the money to save up for this equipment. And I got it, and a friend of mine was a musician, and he had the worst song ever, and he wanted a music video for it. And so I said, I'll do your video for it. <laughs> entry fee for getting into this party they're going to have. So I made like $500. And I grabbed all my ESL students. And they didn't speak English really well. And they had to move things frame by frame, left and right, like millimeters. 
I'm like, left, right, left. And they fucked that up. And, you know, like, there must have been like 20 Korean kids in my house. I had, I had Japanese housewives and you know, bankers' wives doing stuff and, you know, afraid to use the epoxy glues. And my wife finally just, get the fuck out of here. She kicked them all out. Let me direct you. And she started directing me. So uh. I sucked at it, you know. And so um, but we made this animated film, and it was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but that stupid thing, I was so proud of it because, because I did it, you know. And uh. I taught myself Final Cut Pro. I taught myself a little bit of After Effects Photoshop and the really early versions. And the dumb thing, the guy sent that tape everywhere, the VHS tape, and nobody picked up his music. But Nickelodeon and MTV saw it, and next thing you know, like six months later, we started getting small jobs. But I mean, but that's story. you know, but you just go in there and you just make a piece of shit. And that's what you guys do. Sure, right? Actually, I've got my cells. I've got like 200 cells from my SBA class, 30 second terrible video, to the Stray Cat Hustle or whatever the hell it was. And it was just this one, this guy throwing a brick at a cat because the cat was making too much noise. And I, I didn't know what to do, and they didn't explain it. I painted each cell completely. So I have 200, and it's just one little bit of movement in each frame. So it was like I didn't do it with the extra cell on top of it, which would have saved me 48 hours worth of work because I did it two nights before it was due. Um, but yeah, I just locked myself in at work. It was very funny. But um, yes, there are two books, two good animation. Go books. ahead, jump There's in. There's the Walt Stanchfield books. Oh are, yes, yeah. Those are really great. What is what is that? Uh, Walt Stanchfield was like an electronic teacher at Disney for the okay, okay, years, and then it's all of his my dad has compiled into these right, books. Right, right. So those are really good for learning drawing for animation yeah. and just like mm -hmm. how to pose characters like in an effective, clear way. Right, I mean, exactly. So it can be applied beyond drawing, yeah. but. And then there's also the Animator's Survival Kit, yeah. the Richard Williams books. Yeah. Those are like super, like start from zero to six mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. Just for character animation, not specifically. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, really uh, great. It, it, I think that's good if you have 20 years to devote <laughs> to the book. That's my like, he, <laughs> like he had when he met, was working on what? Uh, Roger Rabbit? No, or that's Rabbit. the, yeah, whatever. The, the thief, the cobbler, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the yeah. dead person. Yeah. yeah. The dead yeah. person. <laughs> the dead person. <laughs> I heard time no, rubbing my head. Too. They're great. Yeah. I just use them all the time. Yeah. Two seconds yeah. straight up, sorry. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. I do all 2D hand drawn animation. Sometimes I'll do like what's called like a digital type stuff where it's 2D, but you're doing kind of like the puppet sound prop type thing. Or but mostly you draw directly into the sentence that you were talking about, directly into the computer. Uh, yeah, I, I do a lot of, I, all kinds of mediums, uh, experimental, uh, 2D computer animation, hand-drawn, stop motion. I, I get bored with each film I do, so I try new techniques. And I think it's, and I think that's, for me, that's the most fun to play with different techniques. And I think technique should really dictate, I mean, the stories and the concepts they really should give, dictate the technique you're using. Sometimes hand drawn doesn't match what you're doing, so. I um, work, uh, actually I learned um, animation in Maya, so um, at Animation Mentor, which is a terrific program. Um, and they have workshops to go to, because I sort of got into animation a bit late. Like, well, my background's painting and drawing, so um, I really like sort of like doing this creepy weird short films, so that's my favorite thing. But, um, <laughs> but I like, um, I also really dig, you know, new technology, and like there's some cool, like Anime VR is this new program where you can do 2D animation in, in the virtual reality space. It's sort of like, oh, wow. um, yeah, yeah, it's, awesome. it's like Tilt Brush or um, Cool, but there's a, a timeline attached to it. And it's um, it's like a brand new thing. But you don't know where to look for your character. Um, <laughs> you can walk around your character. You can walk around your character and add stuff. But there's onion skin. There's oh, onion skin. It's that. really cool. Uh, I know. I okay, have to so wrap my head around it. It's a little nuts. Yeah. And you can export that to unique. But anyway, I'm sort of plugging that cell work because they just, they, we might do a demo. Anyway, it's, it, but that, you know, it, the new tech, they're all tools, right? So um, mm -hmm. it's really, um, they're just tools, so um, yeah, yeah I, I really, I mean, I, I would love to, 
It's like you think you can draw, and then you start to try and animate, and you realize, like, you can't. No. <laughs> but, um, but you do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it, CG stuff, too, it has its own um, issues. I always like to think of it as um, sort of like, like, cart and horse and then like racehorse. It's like CGW to like rain, rain in the stallion because the stupid computer's just making this floaty, floaty, floaty keyframes and yeah, you're trying to like reel it in. Whereas the other, you're plodding along because you have to, you know, draw everything. But, um, but yeah, it's something. I have the like, you know, deepest respect for all animators because um, they just yeah, work so hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's pushing a golf ball across the country with your nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I work in two D, um, and uh, but my animation style, because I started off as uh, an illustrator, and then I taught myself animation. Um, my style is um, is I think flatter than most. Um, so it's not only not 2D, it's like flat, you know, it's very, car very cartoon, like moving cartoons. And I, I feel uh, like I can express anything in, the, in, this, in this medium. So, um, all, you know, although um, I do want to incorporate other, other things, it just, I don't know, I, am, I always seem to be able to do what I want to do in T2D. Now, Yvonne, you mentioned programs. How many programs are out there? I mean, I know about Blender, which is it Blender even still around? Oh, yeah. yeah. It is. And yeah, that's yeah, a freeware. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's, it's, yeah, they're oh, I didn't get past that. like the first yeah. thing. No, Blender's fantastic. I, yeah, Blender's open source and free, and I recommend it. Maya and 3D Studio Max are great too, but geez, like you have to um, pay a subscription, and it's just, and then there's also um, character, like the Adobe, you know, Flash is kind of no more, but um, they have uh, character, character Studio, or character, I haven't touched or, that one yet, yeah. Flash still exists, it's just got Amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 it. That's what I'm thinking that's of. That's yeah. Right. So they're trying to. Yeah. And there's um, Toon Boom and there's TV Paint. TV Paint. TV Paint is um uh is a really great program made by extremely annoying people <laughs> <laughs> in France. Um, it's like it has brushes that are very similar to brushes that you can use in Photoshop. But it is uh, not a particularly user-friendly interface, and their forum is not particularly friendly <laughs> well, either. I didn't uh, anything when I was done. I was so confused. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, so there's a, a, a program that's being upgraded called Plastic Animation Painter. Oh, yeah, that's the one that Gary oh. that, oh. Yeah, yeah, that I have a very good friend who yeah. said that they're upgrading it, and it's yeah. like super cheap. Yeah. Um, there, there's also a program, I first started out in a program called Take Two. There's a program called Take Five. It's like $30. Yeah. Um, and it's a, a really great program. Um, Photoshop has gotten way better. Right. right? That's way what better. I use yeah. on all the free yeah. shows. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm surprised. Like animating in Photoshop. I, yeah, I did a film in Photoshop like three years ago. It was a nightmare to do. And but now you, it's, it, it works seamlessly with After Effects. Yeah. You bring it right in. And, yeah. Yeah. and it just, uh, I'm just surprised at it is. Yeah. And he's still clunky. It's clunky. I, 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 like, I like the clunky, though. I like TV Paint because it's clunky. Well, and there's weird right. things you can't do in TV Paint, which is great. Right. TV paint. And guys, I'll go through the recording and try and get everything yeah. up on the website. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of information yeah. really coming out about me. I'm sorry. You can, you can also Yeah, Unitarian. <laughs> <laughs> Unitarian. Yeah. Yeah. Unitarian. No, it is a <laughs> church of Unity. Or Amiga. <laughs> no, but the um and and also um Tomb of Harmony. I have to say it. it has gotten amazing. Yeah, like good. that Harmony version. I mean, shoot, it's you can like. Oh. It's, it's like eighteen bucks a month if you're a student sweet. or a teacher. Yeah, and you can like not only you can draw. Uh, 
Yeah. Like you can yeah. add tweens, yeah. and then you can also, yeah, like add keyframes after the fact. It's crazy. Like they're a little like sort of cheating. Oh, my head. Can you explain some of those terms? Um, can you explain like onion skin, tweens, and keyframes? Oh, yeah, sure. Onion skin is, well, think of like an onion skin you can see through the translucency. Mm -hmm. So when, when animators, before computers, they had a light box, and they put paper on a light box with a peg bar to hold it in place, and you would see the drawing underneath by turning on the light box. And that's called onion skin, so you would see the frames uh, before you know they're coming after, so you can uh, s you can get an idea of where you're going to draw next. And the computers have onion skins built into them with these programs. Right, and you can look at the drawing before mm -hmm. the drawing, after, yeah. and then actually look at two or three drawings. Yes. Um, if the animation program doesn't have onion skin, you don't want it. Yeah, I know. It's not an animation program. But you can toggle things too. And to that's how I learned how to animate. And toggling means you literally just see frame before, frame after, frame before, frame after. They're flipping. I'm flipping, yeah. That's how like, Disney animators used to yeah. have multiple sheets of paper on, on their disk, their light box. Mm -hmm. And yeah. place the pages between the fingers and roll them back and forth to see yeah. the sequence of drawings. Uh, yeah, so you can do that just like that. Yeah. Like did they, they actually include that on the original Snow White VHS release <coughs> years ago? I thought that was a special, it was a bonus, and they showed you the actual animation process for Snow White back in the 30s. Yeah, a lot of that was rotoscope, right? She was this yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was actually My first film I made on paper. Really? Yeah. yeah. Paper, and then, uh, and then um, we, uh, the first one was, uh, inked on, just inked straight on cells. And the second film, we Xeroxed the, pe the pencil drawings onto cells. Mm -hmm. And one of Andy's students last year, Edwin Chavez, did a post oh, yeah, yeah. film, 30 seconds, and it was brilliant. And I actually included it in one of the sessions last year mm -hmm. because I was so amazed what did he do? He did it on the subway. Oh, that he was your like drawings yeah. on the subway. Yeah, on his on post the yeah. the kid, he's like he's commuting from Bushwick in Brooklyn to the South Bronx, and for like a year and a half, oh, I don't remember, like a year, two semesters, he just had sticky notes and pencils and pens, and he would draw on the sticky notes and flip them like we're talking about, and then he, he colored them with markers, and uh, and he ended up like 600, 700 uh, yeah. sheets and. I helped him shoot it with a camera and you know frame by frame and uh, that film really really helped him a lot. He won a whole bunch of awards. I love it. I sent it to post it. I don't know if they ever did anything, but mm -hmm. I sent it. I sent it to post it. <laughs> did you really? Yeah, I don't know if they were actual <laughs> post it notes, but I sent it. I said, guys, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. No, right. no, look at this. You've got to see yeah. this. But it just goes so. to show you that you know you can make a film and be really scrappy about it. And I think uh, you know getting back to that, no matter what software you have. It doesn't matter. You just have to pick something and work with it. And, that, and you know, and often not using software is an advantage because then you actually understand the process of it. And what software does, it kind of hides the pro it hides this, how it came with it, how it came about because it's because you don't un it's, it's no long it's not no longer something concrete. It's become this abstraction of what it once was. And so actually, by animating on paper or animating real dolls. When you get into these programs, they make a lot more sense. Yeah. And also, it, sometimes mm -hmm. limitations are something yeah. that are benefit because yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you open up Blender for the first time, it's like <laughs> yeah, that was just it. there's a million it's bugs. Like space shot in the too. Is that vector? Well, that Blender's a three D program. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. actually, two all is also like that. Just I have no idea what I'm doing, so yeah, I'll walk you through it. Still don't know. He was great because he just like got right back to me. Yeah. So he's over in the room. Yeah. So that's something that I'm dealing with right now. I'm making a 15 minute, 16 minute animated short, which is long for animation. <laughs> and there must be 40 different voices in this film. It's a, about it, it's about illegal immigrants living in West New York, New Jersey. Oh. And uh, every day I'm grabbing a student from my school. Most of them are Latino. And I'm trying to get them to read these oh, come lines. Come on, I'm your mother. I got you. I just got my mother, and it's like, but it's, it's taken me like eight months to get this thing compiled together, just to get these voices right. And normally, if there's a budget, you get a casting director, and the casting director 
just make some phone calls and you pay them a bunch of money and magically they come to the sound studio and you record them. Yeah. We've also done things where we get favors because we work in advertising, my wife does, uh, where we o they always work with sound people for the commercials and so they, what we do is we go, can you do us a favor, you know, and you can help us write this or whatever and they let us use their sound studios and, uh, and often people that work in sound really know how to do voices and that's what we normally do. And for your first question it was the the writing, yeah. The collaboration, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. What right? I do when I, I write my own material, I really, my stuff is very writing based and that's why all the things I do. But uh, there are lots of people like who I teach who are looking for things to animate, you know, uh, different levels, different skill sets, so you might want to approach schools. Uh, yeah. It's good to think about what the project is yeah. for. Like, if it's for kids, maybe you'd stand some to make some money mm -hmm. if it was a children's book. Yeah, I have a children's picture book. All right. That's one of my things that so, I picture the anime. So if you wanted to, like, do a series, mm -hmm. um, but if you do, like, a one-off, mm -hmm. um, uh, unless you meet a student who's looking for subject matter, um, you know, it, it, it's like animation is so time consuming. Um, I think you might, uh, finding a, an animator who knows what they're really doing mm, yeah. might be impossible mm -hmm. unless you can pay them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, everybody has to eat, you know, the high cost. Well, sure. of it, but that balance of trying to find somebody who, who needs the, the experience right. and then finding somebody that's not going to give you a piece of crap and give you a pleasure. And it right. right. also boils down to the labor yeah. triangle, right? Yeah. So, how many years do you want to wait for this project to get done? <laughs> <laughs> like, do you have five years, eight years? You know what I mean? Because that person still has to support themselves. Right. right, so right. it's really, you know, you yeah. can have quality, you can have it fast, you can have it cheap. Right. So you can only pick two of those things. Right, right, right. right. You know what I mean? So, it really is. so that, I so you know, yeah, so that, that timeline can stretch. <laughs> I mean, actually, I had someone come back to me with a job that I had to turn down, and it just made me laugh because, like, one of the first things he said was, um, wow, this took a long time. <laughs> like, of course it did. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, it came out great, so it's you know cool, but yeah, it's always something. Okay. Uh, okay. So I would probably say after the script is written, but before you record anything, mm -hmm. would probably be the time to start talking to animators if you want it, and because then, in my experience, you normally from there would start like, storyboarding and maybe designing things simultaneously in character groups or environments or things like that. But once you've got storyboard drawn out, that's when maybe like it doesn't have to be final recording or anything, but if you just record it to kind of test the length, mm -hmm. that's when you can kind of see how your drawings, your storyboards match up to your script, and you kind of see it in context and see if things are working. And from there, once you animate, or before you animate, really you should have things recorded mm -hmm. if people are talking and stuff like that. You've got, to, you've got to have the line for you to do that and you should have that person talking. That's my but at the same time, your animator is probably going to be your director. Mm -hmm. So you want to really involve that animator so that he gets a track that he can really work with. Yeah, exactly. And your voice is really going to be a reflection of the character design. So, you know, a short squat guy or a tall skinny guy, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to have a different timbre to their voice and a different color. Just you've got to you've got to really work with your voices based on characters. Yeah, voice track is so 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 yeah. important. Yeah. So, and if you've got the budget, talk to them. If you've got the money, go for it. Uh, Producer would figure that out for you, and depend. And if it was budgets, like the budgets are now, um, <laughs> you would be shocked at how fast <laughs> it gets produced. When you were saying like roughly twelve thousand dollars a minute for independent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for commercial animation, like Ghost in the Shell, I mean, anime is typically more streamlined than production, but I would say that's probably still not so far off. It'd probably be more with the yeah, anime. Yeah. But, so that's one minute episodes 30. Just keep on doing that. But that also doesn't include any of the pre 
production steps. So like, you have to storyboard, you have to design, you have to kind of plan everything out before you get to animation, which is half right. cost on top. But, but, then, the production. Yeah. but then also if it's 30, if it's a whole bunch of episodes, yeah. Yeah. the way the producer works is they try to figure out ways where they can bundle things and package things, so mm -hmm. it becomes more cost effective. Yeah. And it really depends, I it really depends on what the production is because it also depends on what the storyboards are. Because some yeah. boards are insanely complicated and they just require more money. Shows like that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But right. it like you'd be your pre production here or partially here and partially in Canada and go into in the mm -hmm. animation in Korea or China. North Korea. Yeah. <laughs> North Korea. Uh, We're on your own on that one, Andy. Yeah. Um, but this is not a job for an independent animator. It would be serious production. No. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff like that. Like Tidmouse has a lot of like you know really mm -hmm. the Netflix product I worked on was through Tidmouse. Oh, okay. But okay. okay. it was chopped out just in the okay. You you wouldn't really want to go to somebody who didn't have mm -hmm. the fun the the equipment and the studio in place. I mean, it's just too much for most independent animators. Yeah. To I mean, when I was uh, when I was working um, on Lizzie McGuire, they had me find a studio in New York who wanted to do the job. I didn't want to go out on a limb and produce the animation for a television show. It's no. just like no, thanks, yeah, pay me a salary. It's terrifying. You know, yeah, it really is because if you fuck something up, it's on you. Yeah. 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 And I, I know for um, current commercial animation production, like in the West, it's about a nine month cycle from pre production to post, but that's staggered. Mm -hmm. um, to kind of make sure we'll finish the storyboard for one, and then I'll start the next one. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's the conveyor belt back in the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or sausage factory. No, not the no, just the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so okay. from that. Yes, commercials in nine months now? Yes. Seriously? But you're yeah. talking about a series, like a... Like for a series. Like a show or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. commercial production. Okay. Yeah. Commercial guess, production. We used to get them done a lot faster than we're talking back 20, 30 years ago. I mean, so, I'm saying like from start to finish. Mm -hmm. You start from where it's character to designs to what it is. Yeah, there. we were an assembly, you know, yeah. DIC did them, we did scripts, we did... Um, Character designs, voiceover, everything is done in LA. Then cells were carried to Korea or Japan or China, wherever they had to go. They were shot and they were back. And speaking about budgets, years ago the dollar was really strong. The yen was like it was four to one. Um, and I'm going back to 1985. Um, we used to get a half-hour show done in Japan or Korea for a hundred thousand dollars. So equivalent to four hundred thousand dollars here. It's a hell of a lot more now. Yeah. Okay, and that's because the dollar against everything else, the other money markets are just stronger. So the figure I'm gonna say about seven hundred and fifty to a million per episode. And the episodes don't use as many cells as they used to. And that's why there's so much computer animation. You don't need to know how to draw. Because if you take the program and the animation mentor it's entirely three D. So you're learning programs, software, as opposed to like doing things by hand, trying. Or puppets. Yeah, maybe yeah, puppets. I was going to say puppets. Stop motion right. puppets. I mean, it does help with planning, if you can. Even like little like thumbnails, you don't necessarily have to know to draw those either. That's really, it's a matter of, um, like if you really boil it down to basic stuff, and everyone will agree, it's like, you know, they say like it's 80% planning, at least, <laughs> before. So the idea is because the actual animation part takes so it's so um, time intensive. Um, you want to just make sure it's all worked out, right? So like everything fits together, so that you create what you're doing is like creating these little window of opportunities for creativity for the animator, <laughs> yeah, right? Or yourself yeah. if you're doing it. But right. but the marks are are set up. But eighty percent. Um, you yes. want to leave a little bit open because yeah. it never goes the way you want. Right. To yeah. Point. But if you don't draw, where do the end? Where do you, how do you get the images out? Well, you don't have to, you can build yeah. puppets and you can shoot yeah. them with cameras, or you can do it virtually in a computer where you literally just sculpt the character in the computer. Or you can use little stick figures. What's that yeah. one, Wonder yeah. Pets? Isn't Wonder Pets like it's out, oh, sort of that? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah
Can you use like, let's say, a basic, um, um, you know, fair use image and then alter that? Can you? Sure. That so that you make it distinctive and make it your yeah, more it's original. Domain. If it's a if it's a public domain right. image, That's you can right. use it. Actually, you could use. Um, uh, Sita sings the blues. But the that? whole film is public domain. Public so domain. if what your story is, is an Indian you'll, you'll setting, you guys didn't like that film. What? I like the film. No, I, like I, like the, the film. I, like, I like the film, but I just yeah. disapprove of, of an animator who yeah. uh, thinks they can steal the music and then goes all, oh, everything should be free. You know, your work is my work, oh. is your work. Yeah. And, and I said that in front of the camera. So. <laughs> so. We asked for the other Yeah, the script writing. Yeah, the script writing. So script writing, I would say, it's more, it doesn't have to necessarily be I would say, in general. Yeah. But you can get more detail. But at the same time, sure. though, it depends. I mean, I my scripts tend to be very similar to, to I think it depends on the project that you but, want to do. Yeah. Okay. But the, the main uh, thing to remember, I yeah. think, is, is animation yeah. is a form of magic right. that you do not get in live action. It's not the same thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you ha if you were going to here we are, live action. If we were going to be puppets, you know, I could be a slug. You could be a turtle yeah. and keep crawling off the stage. I mean, there's animation is literally magic, and and, that's your and, and it, if you're going to go to the trouble of animating, it's I think you should have a reason that it's animated. Yeah. It's but I realize, uh, yeah, depending <laughs> on. We've open conversation. Um, <laughs> but depending on the animation, the rate of engagement changes. Like in 2D, you probably the scenes I feel that have to be they move faster. So let me get back to your third question. Just yeah, my talking about the, the editing yeah. of. Uh, so yeah. I would say it's in reverse. You do all your editing before you even start animating. Because you plan it all out in your storyboard. If you're smart. Ideally, it. Because it's so expensive and time consuming, you want to know exactly what it is you're going to make before you start. That's the 80% planning that you get. So you plan it all out, every shot, every action within that shot, and then you go to the beginning. So then when you're done, you don't have to think about editing, you just sequence all the shots together and the project is done. Your animator is your editor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure. yeah. I mean, my wife does the editing for me, and I'm terrible at editing. So it's like it's a whole. And walking off over animation shots. <laughs> well, I yeah, that's the thing. I edited something, mm -hmm. one action piece, and um, and it I we talked about this earlier, but like I spent so it, it was so inward time because I was like seriously like frame by framing because I'm just like no, well what they're saying has to match with the like bouncing the shoulders and stuff like that because I'm totally you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. It, by then I was just like oh I spent way because I was treating it like an animation. You Really right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you don't usually see that so much. I mean, there's, there's no different. B roll. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. In the in the animation. Yeah. You're starting yeah, loose yeah. with animatic and drawings, and then sort of mm -hmm. narrowing in. Yeah. yeah. Unless the, you know stuff didn't work, we would just play it. Could you partner something. with somebody who draws? Uh. Yes, I could. I, I, I could actually, but I, I actually had a passion for animation. Because I did my first film program in Denmark. Mm -hmm. uh, that was where I started my film program. Uh, no, I never did animation. I was kind of being deterred. Uh, my colleagues were telling me, oh, you, you have got to know how to draw before you can go into animation class. So when I was asked to, uh, asked to pick my subject, I, I left at animation. Because I, in fact, I'm a very bad drawer. So that was well, why. Do you practice your drawing? Because uh, everybody's bad until they start Yeah, mine, mine, is, mine is something else. <laughs> huh? Because that, mine is something else. I don't know how to draw at all. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, if I started, I, 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 I was a biochemist by profession, but I, I had a passion for filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So after my first degree, I went to Denmark to study filmmaking. And drawing has been a bad part of me. So, <laughs> so when they, yeah. A lot of animators, especially 3D animators, use live action footage as reference. Mm -hmm. It's not rotoscoping. Yourself yeah. doing the action that you want your character to do, and then you use that as a guide. 
instead of what like I would typically do, is I would like thumbnail out the action, like just quick sketches to plan it in my head before I jumped in and did like the real time and smooth drawings. Mm -hmm. But a lot of three D animators would do it yeah. with just or footage. Both, yeah. Or both, yeah. Or yeah. 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 So that's what I'm around drawing yeah. still. So could you could use your your film and all like yeah. to do three D? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, there's a puppet. Well, I mean, puppetry for sure. Disney animation. It's like robotic. I mean, I would say like puppetry and animation are definitely. Yeah. So I mean, animatronics. I mean, I would say that's probably more similar to like rotoscoping versus, you know what I mean? Like versus like rotoscoping and puppetry and robotics. Right. Because there's a and there's definitely. They are getting better, but there is definitely like a way still, you know, robot moves that's very like um, linear, and yeah, there's not a lot of arcs in their movement, and that's really sort of, um, you know, that's sort of the organic way that they move is. Yeah, well, you, see, you, yeah. you see films now, and and the, the screen, the full end screenplay that I, I'm trying to sell, it, it could be done all animated, or it could be live action with animation, but because there's some. A fantastical critter in it. And there's a lot of undersea critters, and so obviously it can't all be um, done live. Some of it would have to be animated. So I wondered, like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, like the Jungle Book. I think they did that uh, some mm -hmm. live. Yeah, some really great. But so those weren't animatronics, so that was yeah. all. That was animation. Yeah, that was green. So you can mix the, mm -hmm. just oh, like yeah. Gene Kelly did a bazillion years ago with that person. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, Rich Williams, who wrote the animated survival kit. The what? I'm sorry. Rich Williams, he wrote one of the books that we were talking about before. He was the animation director on Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, yeah. Which is also a blender. Right. 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 Blender. 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 And it's really easy to steal Adobe. And see what After Effects or Flash or Photo. I think they give the CS3 out for free now. Oh, that's cool. I think you just download CS3. I'm pretty sure. Blender is 3D animation. Yeah. It's a lot of like free resources. This is all open source, so you can learn how to do it all on What was the name of the 3D program when you were talking about Imagine? Or? That was Zero Thing, I'm not sure. Oh, oh. Uh, okay. Well, what was it? Uh, and you were mentioning an a 3D animation program that was really easy to use. Oh, you were talking about paint. You were talking about. No, no, it's not TV. No, Blender's not easy to use. It's great, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. there's yeah. a plastic yeah. No, that was that's two D. Anyways, okay. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yvonne, you mentioned the term thumbnails before. What do you mean? Oh, um, so there's um, uh, they're tiny little sketches. It's like a tiny little, a tiny little. Tiny little story <laughs> 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 but, Yeah, but the, the idea is that you um, want to sort of get your ideas out um, uh, scene by scene w in a way that um, it's not precious, that you can just kind of throw away and like keep moving forward. And, and, and it's sort of one of the first stages of planning. Step right? out one in writing. Yeah. It's what it's just kind of oh, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what time. this, yeah. back to that Netflix thing I was working on, that's sort of what was for the sequence. Okay. Uh, it's like uh, his soldier from Iraq comes back after his his term there, and he has PTSD. And this is one of his like, flashbacks that he has from when he was there. That's what we're doing. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's but very because long. it was like his memory, it was exaggerated in all these like very dramatic ways to try and uh, amp up his. I see. Okay. Wasn't it MTV's pop up similar to that, to that years ago? Hmm? Pop ups? Or pop outs? I don't remember that. Pop -ups? Mm -hmm. what? Yeah. MTV? No, it was a TV series and it would have, people would have like little cartoons over their heads. Oh. That's oh, right. I yeah. thought that's what oh, they get like backs about the, about the musicians and stuff like that. Oh, no, that was VH, VH1's pop-up video. VH1's pop-up. Oh, yeah, pop oh, VH1, yeah. sorry. I, I would say yeah. to that question, I was there at the question, beginning. I would say to that question, though, like, and I don't know if this is the sort of impetus, but don't, um, I, I would just, if you have a vision like that in your mind that you want to pursue, like, I would think about what's been done already, because 
everything just kind of repeats and sort of moves in cycles. You know what I mean? Like, just kind of, I would explore your original idea, and you know right. what I mean? Just kind of see yeah. where it goes, because it's going to be your expression, mm -hmm. and um, especially with regard to, like, um, animation, you can do anything with it. Right. Um, yeah. So there are just so many variables, like, is it, you know, black and white, like, what do the characters look like? atmosphere is there, you know what I mean? Like, like, do you that, want it to be funny? Yes, you want it to be, exactly. Why is it being used? Like, what specifically are you trying to convey? I mean, just even starting there, like a million branches. Like the Harry Potter movie, that last yeah. one, they had that really cool se the flash the sequence that explained something about about the origin of, I don't know what, the, what it was. It was really, really cool, and there was a real reason for it to be animated, because uh, they wanted to create this magic. Couldn't have been done in live action. It would make no sense. I see. Yeah. Okay. And morphing and things changing into each other. Yeah. And then yeah. I mean it also creates um, like you think about like anomalies, I don't know if you've seen that film, but probably like a third of the way I thought to myself like, why is this game? Like it kinda got my nerves a little bit. Just like yeah. so you can see the seams, like big deal, like I didn't really care for the character design and like their arms are long, like they look too realistic. But then it's then it it's this like really beautiful scene where suddenly the main character is like naked getting into the shower. Oh, and I was just like, Oh all right, it's amazing. Like I'm totally sold. Because there's something about from that point on, the the film almost had this like extra commentary about like what it is to be human, and and then you think about like Hollywood, and like how like you know uh, yeah. the, these main characters wouldn't be cast in this film if it was like action. Have, and because and everyone had the same face. Yeah, <laughs> that was, so, was, you know, was great. You know, but like Jennifer Jason Leigh would never been cast right, in that right, right, love right. scene. Like yeah, it's right. nuts. No, yeah. But I mean, there are all these other things yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and there was like so sort of a naturalness of the, the, of the puppetry, awesome. right? That was like right. created hu these mm -hmm. human, intimate human moments. It was amazing. And it, for me, it created an enormous amount of anxiety. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Watching it. I yes. Like, yeah, I feel horrible about what and, then, yeah. and it was Maybe the that's why I sameness oh, of the puppets. Yes. Anomalies. Yeah. What? Anomalies. Anomalies. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie Kaufman. So, yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. So I mean, you know, so that is like a whole another mm -hmm. way to use animation, you know, and it's sort of almost like self-reflecting, sort of reflects humanity. It's really fascinating. But by the end yeah. of it, I thought, well, you had this happen to you. Right. You know, and that yeah. started out like as a radio show and I think she hate animated features. I had a really hard time with them. That one was great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Generally. To your it, it animate, I think that three quarters of the animated features that are made, and I, actually I would even bring it up to ninety percent. Did at a certain point, I I personally I'm in animation. I hate animated features I, I'm because I I feel like they get boring. Oh. Like they're very there's a it's a rare animated film that three quarters of the way they, I don't fall asleep and wake <laughs> up and go, oh fuck, it's not over yet. <laughs> what about I mean, Kubo, the Kubo, what? The two, Kubo? No, I'm not saying all. Oh, okay, okay, I'm, at, I'm not right saying now. all of them, but I think yeah, a large yeah, no, number yeah. of animated features. It's just so hard to have animation carry, mm -hmm. carry that load. I think I love the Incredibles or that right. some of that is a result of maybe some shortcuts and sort of a, a, an overplayed structure. Right. The chase. Yeah. Like exactly. in all the panda movies. The cute part. Oh, yeah. The movies. family friendly part. I have a kid and I have to watch these movies over and over. <laughs> I have the soundtracks memorized, you know, it's like oh, frozen <laughs> I know by heart. Oh. oh, so does everybody else. I mean, I like it the first time. It just it never dies. It just uh, never plays dies. on and on in the background. Yeah. Somebody's Let like, it <laughs> you walk down the street, it's like playing. It's like, oh my right. god. But then there's like Miyazaki. Like, well, right. I'm saying I mean, there are certain, there are studios that, yeah. I mean, I, that this is just me. Did you fall asleep with the Red Turtle? I haven't seen it yet. What? The Red Turtles. Did you fall asleep? I didn't see it. No, um, I haven't I seen it yet. Seen it. No. Okay. I usually should stay away from features. Yeah. Like really? Okay. I wanted to yeah. No dog on it. I'm sorry. We just went off on a conversation all around. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. Who has any more questions? <laughs> I'm sorry. Pop <laughs> animation and why I discovered it. It was like the, exactly what you're saying. Where you just, I, I love working 18 hours like brag about it. I mean, it's awesome. And. 
I, I had the, the Maxi Pad campaign I did. They used to call up this guy who worked there. He had a list. And he'd go, Do you have the shit this, the shit this, the sick this? And what's the shit this? He's like, You know, drinking coffee, eating donuts for like 18 hours, not seeing your family for a week. And I'm like, Not for this job, no. But, you know, but it's true. And I got into teaching because uh, for me, it's a lot more life reaffirming. I just find what I don't like about working commercially, and some people, it suits them really well, is I don't like being that deck of cards with like, oh, we have 64 animators, or I don't like clients that try to, we're well, not even try low bowl me, low bowl me because they don't understand how tedious the process is, and I don't, to me, it's like when I was in high school trying to date, it's the same kind of feeling. It's like, this is not going to work out. It's not going to work out. Then you feel bad when they break up with you, and I don't like that shit. So if I love animating, and I love, there's nothing I like more than making a film and having you know, an audience of you know, many, many people watching and laughing and all that kind of stuff. But I don't like the commercial side. And your stuff is online. Hostess yeah. stuff is yeah. online. Yeah. Go and check out Hostess, because there are some wonderfully creative students in the program. You just, you knocked my socks off that day. Yeah. I liked everything I saw just to give me a word. So, process. I, 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 um, I write my own music and I sing it and animate it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, there's such, when you're actually creating something and, um, and your animation, like I like working to music, and your animation, uh, does what you need it to do, and actually you are able to kick it up higher than you thought. It's just like, you know, it's just like, wow, what I did. And it, it's like, I think any other yeah. art form. Yeah. The thing is, yeah, like something like, like painting, like at least in my experience, you know, like to spend like a month on one frame, <laughs> and then you might have a show if you're lucky, yeah. and no one, everyone just drinks wine and doesn't really look at what you did necessarily. <laughs> they spill it on the paint. Right, right. or they look, or your friends look, you yeah. know what I mean, and tell you how they see your bleeding soul or whatever. But it's like, but it's very isolated. Um, and then but with animation, like I know as soon, especially with Animation Mentor, when I was just like, I'm going to get serious about studying this animation thing. But I felt like I found a tribe almost, and it's like these people that are like a little nuts, like they work have serious work ethic, and um, and are really focused on detail, and yet have a social side, you know, and want to collaborate, and that is it's beautiful, you know, and and that's the thing, like it is a bit of a grind. It's hard. It's a hard way to try and make a living, but you know, we all have to do. We all do yeah. stuff to make a living in New York City. We're all living here, right? Yeah. So like. It's it's uh, you know it, but it's it's really uh, it is magic it's a magical thing especially when you see yeah the result of your work. Well, okay, so if it's flat, that's something a little bit different than if it's three D. Obviously, three D, and you guys know this. You can bring these into um, Unity, which is primarily a game engine, uh, and that's like a three D environment that you can then play out of and sort of like move your way through. Uh, if it's two D, there are people that are doing ways of. Uh, integrating 2D animation into VR in an interesting way. I mean, it's not something that's inherently compelling because 2D is generally flat. Right. Uh, I, I presume somebody could probably make 3D 2D drawings, but I haven't really seen that. Um, well, yeah, well, it's really yeah. just like yeah, it, stepping around. So. <laughs> right, it would be like yeah. cardboard in front of cardboard or something. Right. Um, but yeah, no, the, the, the 3D stuff is, and you, you guys all know this because I'm sure you brought your like the extent that you guys have done 3D have brought into like different programs and stuff like there's formats like OBJ and FBX and all yeah. that sort of stuff that you then bring it in I, but I don't know so that's the thing yeah, yeah. Oh, say, I was just going to say duet like yes I was going to say it's yeah. a 2D animated film that's uh, it's not VR which is where you can like, pause and walk around in space but it's 360 video right so right. you can watch this 2D film happen around you kind of and a job I worked on two weeks ago actually was You kind of stay in place, but as you watch this animation is going on all around you, so talk about the process. I mean, I was the only animator yeah. around, so it was like a live action thing. It's this other New York Times like picture thing on art throughout the last few years and stuff. So it's like a three minute long sequence where they have all these different live action art actors, you know, dancing around and stuff, and you're looking and watching. And then in the background, there's all this 2D animated stuff added in. So 
the way I worked on it was I worked on everything flat, like just gigantic frame size drones. And then that was later taken into the 3D realm and composited in the full person footage. And then after all of that was composited, it's then like kind of you take this big long rectangle and you roll it back together into a square. Yeah, like we rectangular. Yeah, exactly. So then you, you know, take this rectangle and fold it up into a sphere and then that you stand inside that sphere basically and watch the video again. So that, that's how it was. But what I think is really cool about animation in VR is the fact that we have tools like Tilt Brush, like Medium, and what I think, I, I don't like the interface of these 3D programs like Maya or Blender, that I can't visualize what's happening in that, like using a two-dimensional surface like a computer screen to visualize a three-dimensional object, I always get confused about like what direction I'm looking at it. Yeah. I would sooner be in the space and then if I'm rigging a character or if I'm moving that character around, I'd rather be in there with him and like move his hand. And we're starting to see a little bit of that with like Mind Show, which is like a 3D animation program, but it's it's closer to like yeah, mocap. It's, it's totally mocap. Yeah, but it's like it's it, fun I, to jump in the character. Right, and, but like suddenly you're like boom. Yeah, like you, you occupy you're this like, character and he captures your emotions, and it, and it's it's motion capture. But I, I think there's a way that you could do animation like in high quality stuff, not like mocap, which you know Ivan always shits on. <laughs> um, but uh, higher quality stuff that like exists and do it by like being in the 3D space with the character that you yeah. are creating, because that's really interesting to me. Well, you know what's funny is, um, <laughs> we talk about this, like, okay, for instance, like, Penrose and Beobob are both really pushing animation, the quality of animation in VR, and um, they just did, uh, you know, Rainbow Crow and, um, and Arden's uh, Way. Arden's Way, thank you. Um, they were just played at Tribeca, and um, they're beautiful, you know, um, and, and I, you know, and of course, it's just lovely to see that because a lot of like we talk about this a lot, but like a lot of really like either not animation or like motion capture that isn't really even worked out is kind of pushed through a lot of this stuff because there's like a, either a lack of understanding or a time element or you know for whatever reason. But um, what's interesting is that um, in the VR space, you know, it's almost like it's like being you know it's like being in the computer program. You can't in VR cheat to the camera. And what that means, and that's something that you always do in CG, um, is you know where the camera is facing. And so a certain pose, um, you wind up almost sometimes breaking the rigs, like breaking the skeletons, breaking the characters, in, in order, yeah, in order to um, create the most appealing pose. And what that means is um, the clearest pose, the pose that that. Um, that expresses what you're trying to have the character express, right? So sometimes you wind up breaking in the rig. Well, something like VR, what's interesting is that you're in the space with the character. So suddenly you don't cheat to the camera. So then it's almost like, how do you approach something like that? You know what I mean? Where is this, where is the, is the person, where's the viewer looking? I don't know, like there's so many different questions, but even just to specifically to animation, um, you know, that part's interesting. So like theater almost. Exactly, but then it's, and it's animated, like, um, yeah. much larger challenge in a lot of ways. And sure. In a way, it's almost like, you know, I, I think they do integrate a lot more um, sort of rough, not much to capture, but maybe um, libraries, you know, into some of the animation. Not probably not the, um, the uh, uh, Baobab studio, because Glenn Keane is like yeah. part of <laughs> that process, and you can totally see in the animation, like, when you see this piece, is like, what I would say about VR uh -huh. is that, like what she was saying about cheating the camera and stuff, that's like in 3D animation, there's this kind of established, and just in film in general, yeah. there's this established, established language. And in animation, you're trying to pose your characters in ways that their emotions and everything read clearly in like mm -hmm. an instant in the length of the two-second shot. Uh, so in 3D, like you're saying, it's hard to know where your character's looking and stuff. A lot of 3D animators use that to their advantage because you place the character in a way that from one angle looks great, but if you were to move the camera at all, it looks like garbage. Right. So they, they try to you know, use that to their advantage when they can. But in VR, you kind of lose that luxury because you have the ability to walk around that character and see, you know, look under the hood basically with how they did that thing. Yeah, watch mm -hmm. knees locking and all kinds of weird stuff that they're right. totally That's fine. Right, from all sides. Yeah. But what's cool is that studios like Boba uh, these new VR animation studios. It's cool because right now people are still figuring it out what that means, how do you make a film in VR, because there's no film language for that. 
so like all the like duet and all the movie spotlight stories are cool to see how the film like movie progresses and how they try and guide your eye. Mm -hmm. Like how because when you're directing, when you're editing, you're telling someone what putting the image in front of them, telling them what you want them to see. Yeah, but, but if you are, it's, it's but in Google Spotlight stories, they even cheat. So like, if you're not looking in the right direction, yeah, they literally pause, pause the story. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. So that yeah. was kind of what I worked on the New York Times 360 thing. Yeah. That was my whole job, basically, was to be the, the guy who brings you back around. Mm -hmm. Like, I was doing all these things in the background that would, like, if you're looking over here, you'd see this thing creep across. Mm -hmm. And we follow that to what you're supposed to be looking at. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so, duet, I, too. Like, the timeline was really, and also, it was a frame rate on that. 60. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, instead of 24 frames a second, they were doing 60 because That's on the phone screen, 60 frame rate is different oh. than film frame rate. I can't even do 12. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant. And also, it branched off. There were two different stories wow. that you could follow. Right. Yeah. But next the, year, if I'm still here, there'll be a VR animation person. Uh, yeah. Yep. But um, that's the other thing too, though, is that like sound becomes so much more important because now you're not sight based and you, sound exists all around you in a spatial environment. Um, because you can you can only look in 180 degrees, but you can hear in 360. So. But the sound wouldn't the sound leave you? You mm -hmm. could use that. Yeah, I I, I do a lot more cinema. I do a lot more live action, and I use a ton of that uh, uh -huh. sound to sort of gear where I people need people to follow a story. Right, you can't like the drums over right. there. You, you can't overdo it though because it becomes like super cheesy very fast. Sorry. But like, um, yeah, you can do a little bit of it. And uh -huh. get away with it. Yeah, that's fascinating stuff. And that's a thing like that. I'm plugging it in VR again. I should really know what to call it, all right? It's just it's a small little studio, and I just love the fact that they sort of like beat these bigger studios to this animation timeline like thing. But um, you should be able to soon export that into Unity. So you think about something that's um, both CG and hand drawn in VR. <laughs> Pretty wild, right? Yeah. Drum trip. Totally. <laughs> okay, it, we've hit six o'clock, so before they come and kick us out, any other questions for the panel? No? Anything else anybody wants to add? I saw, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Um, uh, can I get a round of applause?